there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a 1929 Ford pickup truck. Well, I've done a few scale models on this show and they seem to be well received and I've been receiving some private messages and um, some requests to do another one. So I thought I would back it up a little bit and do one of Toys and Joys earlier patterns being the 1929 Ford stake bed truck. This pattern is pattern number 82. Um, I will be sure to put a link to that below. Um, it's one of their more simple patterns back in the day when it was actually done as a blueprint with ammonia. This is not a computer generated one. Um, so either way, we're going to get into it. This is going to be a multi-part series here. And um, what I will do is go through roughly some of the simpler parts and how they assemble. We will get more into detail with some of the harder or more difficult part to make, or parts to make rather. Um, and we're going to give special attention to the wheels as well. Although I do have a tutorial on how to make highway wheels, we will be showing it again in this series just to freshen it up a bit. So let's head over to the bench and see where this build starts. Well, with Toys and Joys plans, they pretty much, the way they work is you start from the beginning and you move to the end. You usually don't have to jump around the print. Uh, to get steps in order to make the model. So everything here on the first page is what we're going to start with. And I think the best way to start is with the frame. Now, the thing with these things as well, I've cut all the pieces for the frame. I'm gonna be making it out of a combination of walnut and poplar, but you want to pay attention to certain things. There will be some details missing. And if you look right here, there is a taper here at the end or the rear of the um, of the frame itself and there's no dimensions on that taper so don't be afraid to draw on your print it's yours make all the markings that you want to in order to make it work for you so that you have references um, the more that you measure on these prints and the more you write on them the less mistakes you make because you know the measurements so either way, you can see I've added that it's going to be a quarter inch thick once the taper is done, and it's a two and a quarter inch long. Also, with these braces, you don't know their positions. They don't give you those measurements. So you will need to measure off of other views. This first one will be two and five eighths from the end, and the second one, five and five eighths from the end. It's just a matter of measuring. These prints are one-to-one -one scale. So what you see here is the size of your pieces. So you do have um, backup if the measurements are either incorrect, which can happen quite often, or if there are missing measurements. So, this taper. I'm gonna use my tapering jig at the table saw, but you don't have to do that. If you don't have a tapering jig, you can mark it out and use a drum sander um, or a belt sander. You can use the scroll saw, you can file it, you can sand it, just get that taper in there. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do with our pieces is we're going to glue this cab base onto our main frame pieces and glue in these braces. Um, as we see from a side view, the frame extensions, which are right here, also part of the frame, they hang below the level of our frame. So I think that's gonna cause us problems if we glue those on first. So just think about the steps or the process of gluing. So let's get their positions marked out first. So with the first five parts cut, we're going to mark the positions of our braces and of the cab base. Uh, this, my friends, is where the anchor rule really, really shines. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can still do this model, but I'm telling you, it, it makes it so much easier. So we're going to mark the first one there at two and five eighths, the second one at five and five eighths. And then from the end for our cab base, we're going to mark this at two inches in from the end. 
and we'll transfer those measurements actually to the bottom of our frame. That way our taper is running down. It'll give us a better reference on what to do. We're going to mark it on both of these pieces and then I'll show you um, a, a really great way to do a glue up on something like this. Well, a great base to be able to work on to assemble a model. This is an old piece of three quarter melamine um, that is from an old desk and I just cut it up and I use this for assembling the models. It's a nice and flat and the glue doesn't stick to the melamine. You can just use a scraper and take it right off. So I have a steel straight edge here clamped to the edge of this board for assembly and I also have a square that is clamped to the steel edge. That gives us two points of reference. It allows us to line up both ends of our frame while making sure that they're square because these two uh, sides of our cabin floor are completely parallel to each other that is going to align these all the way along when it's glued together and as long as this edge is against this square and these two edges are against our straight edge the whole assembly will end up being square now these ones here may be able to vary a little bit and that's why we have a smaller square to use for reference as well with a glue up you want to Make sure that you have some cotton swabs uh, or small pieces of paper towel or cloth and some clean water. That is to clean up the squeeze out on this section. So we're going to glue this up. Again, this is upside down. Our tapers are facing up. So this is actually the bottom of our build. And we will use the marks that we laid out on our frame for reference to make sure that everything's in the right place. We will apply glue to our pieces and glue them in place. Um, you just want to make sure that you clean up the squeeze out and that before anything has a chance to set, that you are checking it for square and making sure that everything is the way that it should be. All right, and with that all in place, we can add our clamps. You want to be careful. A lot of people love these quick grips and don't get me wrong, I've got plenty of them in my shop, but what they can do is when you're applying them, they can move things askew. Um, so be careful of that and just make sure that once you get your clamps on here, you check everything that it's still square and still lined up. Clean up all the squeeze up, let this completely dry. So there we go. Um, just to let you know, these shop made cam clamps, we made these on the show quite some time ago. They are absolutely brilliant for this kind of application. They're a light duty cam clamp uh, that works really well on something like this. Just be careful that you don't glue them to your project because they are after all wood. Now because the frame extensions hang below the frame, we will not be able to give this a sanding once they're glued into place. So you can give this a sanding now and the best way to do that is with a piece of sandpaper glued down to a three quarter inch thick piece of MDF. It's less aggressive than a power sander and you can get some great results and still keep your crisp edges of the model. So once that is done, before you start the glue up again, you can take a one inch scraper and all of the glue that had gotten onto our assembly board from that last glue up, that will just scrape cleanly off of this board and that will end up providing us with a clean flat surface again for the next stage of the glue up. So these melamine boards from just from an old piece of furniture are a godsend when it comes to gluing up models like this. Okay, so once again, because it hangs below our model, we need our frame upside down. So we can also see by the print that they line up, the extensions line up with the rear of the cab base. So all we're going to do is apply glue. In this case, we want to apply it to the frame. We're going to line this up with a square across here. Just like this, we can line them up 
and that will give us our alignment for those two pieces. And just like we did before, we'll double check to make sure everything is square and seated flush here tight to this board, as well as that everything is lined up along that square. Clean up the squeeze out and let this one completely dry as well. While we're waiting on those frame extensions to dry, we're going to work on the two axles. Now, in this case here, we can see the front axle here and the rear. You're better off, in my opinion, to cut the blanks to their size. In this case, you know, four and a half, one and an eighth by three quarter. Same thing with this one over here, which is uh, three by one by three quarter. And that's what I have done for these two blanks. And then from there, you have several options. You can mark them out manually, which is what I prefer to do, or you could glue this pattern on here and cut it out um, using a scroll saw, a band saw, that sort of thing. Um, or you could make a template and then trace it onto your blank. That way you can test fit everything with the template and then you know that it's going to fit on the model. But we're gonna start here with this one. And again, you can see here that I've scribbled down dimensions of my own and all we're going to do is mark this out. So the rear axle here is very simple. Um, it hardly needs an explanation. It's a three-quarter line right across the bottom, just like that. We're going to measure in one and a sixteenth from each side on that line, one and a sixteenth from this side, one and a sixteenth from this side, And then we've measured the diameter of this little hub here, which would be your differential. And I've measured it to be one inch. We're just gonna take a one inch circle template. We'll line it up with the edge of our lines that we just drew and the edge of our blank. And we'll draw that profile. And that is our rear axle done. Um, at this point as well, we will mark the hole for our axle to go through here, which will hold our wheels on. Um, and for that, we're just going to center it on the axle, 3 eighths of an inch in by 3 eighths of an inch in. There we go, 3 eighths from the top, 3 eighths from the side. This will give us a centered hole at the top three quarters of our axle here. And we're gonna take it over to the drill press and we will drill a 5 16 diameter hole right through. Um, the other parts being that little hub, we're just gonna take that over after the hole is drilled and we're gonna cut that on the scroll saw. Okay, and that would be the rear axle done. A fairly simple piece, easy to do, but I want to point something out to you. If at for, for any reason at all, at any point in time, you are not happy with the way the piece is turning out, scrap it, get rid of it. This is the second one I did because somehow when I was drilling the first one, these holes are not even close to lined up. Somehow it went crooked. I ended up way off to the left here and kind of off to the right there. I'm not happy with it. Don't keep this on your model. It's another key to getting a successful model is don't settle for a piece that you're not happy with. If you're not happy with it, get rid of it and make a new one that you are happy with, where your holes are centered where they're supposed to be. Okay, so we can now move on to our second axle, which will be the front axle. Now, here's the thing. Really, the only way that I would want to do this piece is to mark it all out. So I will scale off this drawing piece by piece and mark it onto my blank. Um, once I get that done, I'll show you where we're going to go from there. So one of the keys to success in making any of these pieces is knowing how they go together and understanding how they go together. So this part right here, this cutout, coincidentally or not, <laughs> this measurement between here and here, two and seven eighths, that coincides with the width of our frame. This is going 
to hug our frame, basically. So for me, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through each process that I would do in making this axle and uh, I'll walk you through it. But the first thing that I want to do is for me, I'm going to set the height of the blade of my table saw to coincide with this measurement right here. And we are going to cut using our miter fence. We are going to cut these lines right here on our blank to make sure that we have a nice flat square edge there to line up with the edges of our frame. So that will be step one. Now the next step that we want to do is take it over to the drill press and we will drill these two stopped holes here in either side of our axle. With those cuts made, that will give us a, um, basically, it, it'll, it'll give us a mark as to where to set the depth stop of our drill press. So I'll drill those two holes and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, and with those drilled, I actually drilled them here. They show a 5 16 diameter hole. I did these quarter inch. I'm going to explain that a little further along in the build. I do things a little differently than some of these drawings. Um, but the next step here that I would do is this 45 degree chamfer on this side. Quarter inch in by quarter inch in. And for that, I'm comfortable enough with this four and a half inch length that we can do that over at the table saw with the miter fence. Well, the next step that I would do would be to do these little tapers here. Um, they're a half an inch in, one eighth of an inch up. Guys, this is not a table saw move. This is dangerous as can be on a table saw. Um, for this, I'm going to use the belt sander. You can use a disc sander, a belt sander, you could use the scroll saw, you can do it by hand, you can file it, um, but those would be your best options here. For me, the best option is going to be that belt sander. So I'll get that done, and then we can do the last step of this one. And for me now, the last step of this would be to cut here and then along this radius. Um, for me, the choice is the scroll saw here, without a doubt. But if you don't have a scroll saw, you can very easily come in here, cut it straight across with a band saw, come back to make a straight cut with the band saw, and you can either cut this curve with the band saw or you can just use an oscillating drum to cut it out. Either way, whatever method you choose, just choose a safe method and we can do that final step to get the front axle completed. Well, now that our frame is dried up and our axles are made, now is your opportunity. We've already sanded the top of, which is actually the bottom of our frame. Now we need to sand and level out the top. We've got a few areas here that are not level. So again, the sandpaper on the MDF will be your friend here. You don't need a lot of pressure. Just light passes back and forth to get everything sanded and leveled. Well, it's now time to mount the axles. And if you look at the prints, you can see the dotted line here of the axle. You can also see it right here on this section of the drawing. It butts up against these frame extensions. So this one's pretty much a no brainer. We can just have our frame upside down because it mounts to the bottom and we can glue it in place using those frame extensions that we've already squared up as our guide to get everything to seat in there properly. Now for the back axle, we can also see that right here, the dotted lines as well. The rear axle here, we can see it hanging down below our frame. There's nothing to guide it with. So we can get a measurement off our print here, which is five eighths of an inch. And this is where the Veritas setup blocks come in handy for all of my builds. And it is as simple as placing a five eighths um, setup block between the rear brace and the axle, and then using a square across the frame to make sure that everything is square and lined up. After that, you can just let these dry. And with that, our frame is dried up. Now, there are some areas we can see right here where the axles have joined. We've cleaned up the squeeze out, but yet we can still see a little bit of glue residue. 
Again, we can sand that using the sandpaper attached to MDF. At this point now, we can go around and look for any areas that need some sanding. Um, there shouldn't be that many if you've done the prep all the way along, but do not uh, fall into the trap or into uh, the, the easy way of picking up a piece of sandpaper and using it in your hand to sand these pieces. What that does is it rounds these edges here, these crisp edges, and any pieces then that will mate onto these sections will now look like they have a gap because there will be a rounded edge. So don't fall into that trap. If you need to sand into smaller areas, mount some sandpaper to smaller pieces of MDF and cut them for custom sanding uh, files, we'll call them. But do not take away your crisp edges by using your sandpaper in your hand. So there you go, there's the frame uh, done at this point. And uh, I think we've made some good progress today. And that, my friends, is all the time that we have for this week, but we've made some great progress with the framework and the axles in place. Um, guys, this series is not meant to be a one quick thing of here, look what I built. My hopes in this series is that I know there's a lot of you out there that are interested in making some of these scale models. And Toys and Joys have some great patterns. Some are advanced, some are a little easier. This is one of the more beginner level uh, builds. And what I was hoping was that this series, I don't care how long it goes. I mean, it can go on for 10 parts for all I care. But my hope is that somebody who is uh, lacking the confidence or doesn't have uh, they, they don't feel that they can do it. I'm hoping that they can view this series and it will give them some insight as what they have to look forward to and some ways that they can build this model and some of the problem solving that goes into it. This way you can take that person whose confidence level was down here at the beginning and boost it up to here and get them to try one of these models for themselves because honestly they are a load of fun and as long as you take your time and think through each process you should really have no problems. Um, I spend a lot of time sitting at the bench kind of scratching my head running through different ways to make different parts. So it's not a matter of you jump into the plan and you start building. Um, don't think of it that way. If you hit up on a part that you don't know how to build it or you're not sure, leave it for now. Leave it for now. Think about it over the next day or two and then come back to it with a fresh set of eyes. Maybe move ahead and make a couple of the other parts that you don't have to glue in place just yet. Just come back to it with a fresh set of eyes and hopefully when all that is said and done, you'll figure out the methods. So guys, I hope that this series is going to give some of you the confidence that you need to try to make one of these models. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning into the show this week. Um, I know this may not be for everybody, but I know that there are some of you out there that will thoroughly enjoy this series, and that's what it's all about. As I said, I don't really care how many uh, episodes this takes. I'm never in a hurry. And besides, <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Guys, these are always a load of fun. I hope that you've enjoyed today's content. I hope it's going to provide you with the confidence that you need to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. <laughs>